Hello, everyone. My name is Yong Kang He. Today, I'm very happy to be here to share with you how to create an IBM Kubernetes service, IKS cluster on IBM Cloud in 18 minutes. Let's get started. Previously, I recorded multiple videos to talk about how to create a Kubernetes cluster on other cloud, other Kubernetes distributions. But this focus is IBM Cloud IKS cluster. First of all, why IBM Cloud? I took a screenshot from uh, the website of Statista uh, based on the Q2 of 2022, uh, the market share. So clearly you can see IBM Cloud, so the market share wasn't great. So if you look at the market share here, IBM only have like a 4% you know, market share. And, uh, but the very important thing here, I want to highlight here is uh, when you talk about Kubernetes, IBM actually is not really behind. If you look at the latest Kubernetes distribution, the version, it's 1.25. Google Cloud is the first cloud to introduce 1.25. IBM Cloud actually, that's the second cloud to have the managed Kubernetes 1.25. So, so excited to share with you how to create a managed Kubernetes 1.25 from IBM Cloud, their managed cloud, a Kubernetes version, IKS. So the other thing I can share with you is, uh, if you look at the uh, cloud regions, I'm based in Singapore, so I care more about the Asia Pacific. IBM has a seven cloud regions in Asia Pacific. Uh, here are the regions, you know, you can see across Asia Pacific, you got a Singapore, a Sydney, Tokyo, in Osaka, a Seoul, you know, Hong Kong, Penang, et cetera. So let, let's get started. How to create an IKS cluster? So there are multiple ways you can create an IKS cluster. You can log into IBM Cloud Web Console to create one. You can use IBM Cloud CLI. You can even just use the Cube Control command with the cluster, you know, dot yaml file to create a cluster. I'm pretty sure there are some other ways to create an IKS cluster. Today, so my focus is to how to create an IKS cluster from IBM Cloud Web Console. So I'm going to go straight to give you a live demo to show you how to create an IKS cluster. But before you can start, you need to have some preparation. And first of all, you need to have a web browser. Yeah, nowadays, who doesn't have a web browser? And then you need an IBM Cloud account credentials. And once you have an IBM Cloud account, you can log into IBM Cloud Console. And from there, you can create an IKS cluster. So let me switch to a different window here. I lo I already logged into IBM Cloud, you know, Web Console. And from here, if you are not in this page, you can click the hamburger icon here or navigation menu, select the Kubernetes, uh, and then it will come to this screen. So what I'm going to do here is uh, click create a cluster. You will be asked to provide a, a the price plan. If you want to choose the free version, actually you can select the uh, 1.25. So I leave it as a standard uh, price plan. And then you've got two options to choose the infrastructure. The one is the classic, uh, that's the older infrastructure. I'm going to choose the new one, the VPC, it's a virtual private cloud. And uh, you typically, if you don't have a VPC, you can go ahead and create a VPC from all, uh, this link here. And now you go to the Kubernetes version. So I mentioned earlier, IBM is the second cloud. IBM is the second cloud to offer managed 1.25. So I'm going to choose 1.25.2. That's the latest version. And then you can choose the location. Yeah, by default, you will you know create all of your resources under the resource group at default. I'm going to send to my resource group where I pre-created, but if you don't have one, you can create a resource group for yourself. It's for simplified management. So I'm going to select the YHE at RG for your one. And then most likely you need to have your, uh, from your VPC, you need to choose which subnet you're going to use. For now, I was using Sydney region from Australia. 
I don't have this, you know, I only create the very, you know, one stopnet. So I can't select the Sydney one and the Sydney two. Basically, there are three uh, zones. I only use the Sydney three as a single zone for the testing purposes. And then you go to the choice, uh, which flavor for your workload. So by default, you got the flavor, it says uh, four vCPU, 16 gig memory. I think for the testing purpose, it's more than enough for me. Do I really need a three, you know, work nodes? I don't really need a three work nodes. Let me make it a smaller. Yeah, just one work node should be enough. Should be enough for my testing. And you can make the, you know, public, uh, uh, both public and the private and the points available, or you can make the private and the points only. Now you you ask the provider class the name. I'm going to make it a IKS for your one. And if you want to add a tag, you can add a tag. Let's say I make the tag owner is young. And you can optionally, uh, actually, this is about default, it's already selected. You can have the integration service. Uh, I think that's a very, very good one from our IDM Cloud. You have the activity tracking. You have the logging also enabled by default. And you also have the monitoring enabled. But if you really don't want, you can click edit, uh, you can choose a different, uh, you know, uh, application instance for logging, for example. And I might just leave it as here. I think that that's all I need to select. So once you make all of the selection here, all we need to do is just click uh, create. So on the right hand side, you might have noticed that uh, there is a total estimated cost estimation for, for CPU, 16 gig memory, roughly around 220 you know, US dollars per month. So I'm going to click uh, create now. So once I click create, so it will take you to the screen, to the Kubernetes cluster list screen and it's showing we are creating the cluster. So shortly it will jump to this screen. So you might also notice uh, by default, the workload is Ubuntu 18. And the BX2.4 times 16, that's the flavor, similar like a AWS instance type or Azure virtual machine, uh, but about VM size. So in IBM's language, that's the flavor. So right now we are preparing the master worker nodes. And you can see I only you know choose one node. So it's the, both of the nodes as the master and the, you know work nodes. The version listed here, 1.25.2. And here is my cluster ID. I only choose CME3 as a, a zone. And from all here, you can also see there is a Kubernetes dashboard. Basically, just use the upstream you know, Kubernetes dashboard. Right now, you know, we're creating the cluster. You might take some time to you know, finish. Uh, in my testing, you take uh, every time. I te tested a couple of times already. So roughly around you know eighteen minutes, uh, the cluster will be ready. If you click uh, on the left hand side, worker workers, you can see we're preparing uh, provisioning, you know, preparing uh, provision the uh, worker, and uh, there is a worker pool option here as well. So right now we're using the default uh, worker pool on the one node. And uh, there is a DevOps, you know, that's the new uh, function I'm going to show you in the next, you know, or, uh, video. Okay, while we're waiting, yeah, let me, you know, fast track. Okay, as you can see, right now from the screen, you can see my cluster actually, the node status is, is already okay. The master status also normal. Uh, while we are doing some add-on, but it doesn't impact you to deploy your applications. So now with this uh, status here, let me come back to my slide deck. So we already created the IKS cluster via the web console. So the next thing I want to show you is uh, you need to verify if the IKS cluster is up running and you can download the kube config file and you can verify it's either you know kube CTO get nodes or cluster information so let me come back to my actually not here sorry let me switch to a different uh, terminal i'm actually right now i'm running from a 
my VS Code terminal. If you haven't logged in, you need to run the IBM Cloud login command to log into the uh, to your cloud. Uh, if IBM Cloud wasn't installed, basically you need to install IBM Cloud at the command line stores first. And then once you you know type the command IBM Cloud login, you will be prompted to provide your email address, your you know password to log in. So I already logged in. If I do the command list all of my cluster here, you can see right now I got a one node cluster. It was created 20 minutes ago. And this is uh, my cluster version 1.25. Remember, this is 1.25. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, I will retrieve the cube configure file and save to my local directory, typically from your home directory. Uh, hold on one second. Where is the problem? Actually, my mistake, my class name without a YHE dash. So this is the correct command. Let me run it again. So by running the IBM Cloud KS the Kubernetes service the cluster configure with the cluster name here. So we will retrieve the Kube configure file and the mode to your dot uh, Kube uh, under the, your home directory dot Kube folder. There is a configure file. Configure file. Now I can check my node status. If I run kubectl get nodes here, so uh, sorry, I pressed the wrong key. So kube control get nodes, you can see I got the one node cluster. This is my cluster name. Uh, no, that's my host name. This is my Kubernetes cluster version 1.25. Okay, I got everything ready. Now I'm going to show you how to deploy a sample application. So come back to the slide deck here. We verify that we already have the access to the cluster. We more, we verify that we got the one node cluster and only 1.25. Now deploy a sample application, it's super simple. You can create a namespace, you can deploy a install PostgreSQL via the Helm chat. Now let me create the sample application here, create a namespace, add a repository, and then install this, you know, in PostgreSQL application. So I just run all the three commands. So shortly it will be up running. If you run another command, let's say get the ports and uh, this namespace, you can watch the status. I'm going to run this command. You can see right now the container is pending creating. Shortly, it will become the container creating and then followed by running. And after the readiness check, it will show you ready one slash one. Okay, that's how we can simply to easily, quickly to deploy a uh, containerized application to IBM Cloud Kubernetes Service Cluster. Okay. I think that's all I want to cover for today. Right now, you know, we don't have to wait to the cluster running, but it should become, uh, become running status in a few seconds. So I'm gonna just including you a few reference links here. So first of all, how to get started. I copied the IBM official documentation page link here, getting started with IBM Cloud or Kubernetes service. And then how to deploy a start kit application to a Kubernetes cluster. And I come in next, I'm planning to show you, to record a, a few videos to show you how to migrate containers from all on-premises or could be from other cloud or other Kubernetes distributions to IBM Cloud IKS cluster. And uh, I'm also interested to record another video to show you how to automate uh, IKS cluster creation and the protection. So talking about uh, automation, previously I already created a multiple automation here. So here listed here, I got a six automation uh, to cover uh, pretty much you know top five, six uh, public cloud. So how to automate an ARO cluster, OpenShift cluster, how to create a GKE or Amazon EKS, Azure AKS, or even you know Alibaba Cloud Kubernetes cluster. Let me check. If the service is up running, yeah, you take you know sixty one seconds. The PostgreSQL uh, application is already up running. So one thing I haven't shown you here is if I go back to my 
IBM Cloud Console, you can see my class name here. And if I click a Kubernetes dashboard, it will launch the Kubernetes dashboard. So IBM did not redesign anything, simply just leverage the vanilla Kubernetes the dashboard feature. And by it's already already you know pre-built in. If you check from here, let's say I want to check my namespace, Yong dash PostgreSQL, you can see my application is up running already. And if you want to check some other stuff, for example, my persistent volume claims, I've got a persistent volume claim here, 10 gigabytes, the size. And uh, what else? Let me see. I think that's all I want to talk about for today. Yeah, I hope it is useful to you. Uh, feel free to provide me any feedbacks or comments. Yeah, feel free also connect to me via any one of the ways listed here. Uh, on the bottom of the screen, that's the one I created recently. Uh, it's a Telegram group chat. So for the members, part of the Kubernetes user group of members, so you can you know connect to me easily, ask me questions, anything. Yeah, thank you for watching. Enjoy your day.